What's up, Neptune Nation? It's Patrick and Paul, and we're back with another Ask Me Anything. What are our favorite advanced programming features in the Apex? Come on, man, it's hard to choose. But uh, I, I guess I can tell you one thing I've been doing recently that I found pretty interesting. If uh, taking the graph of pH and alkalinity and then overlaying the two, uh, there's some swings that I really didn't realize that actually are out of phase where your alkalinity is going up and your pH is going down. And so that was a really interesting uh, phenomenon to see in one of my tanks. And in fact, when I looked at a tank where I'm supplementing my alkalinity, and I'm doing that in such a way that I'm controlling my alkalinity with my Trident and my dose pumps, mm -hmm. it flattened it out and that, that out of sync oscillation disappeared. So you kind of turned it up at the point that you saw um, your alkalinity going up. Um, you kind of, um, what, what did you do to, 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 uh, to correct that? Well, I set a threshold. So when I have my alkalinity dosing, I have three different sources of alkalinity coming into my tank, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and then Kalkwasser. Yeah. So depending on what the reading is in the Trident, I'm going to turn them off in a stepwise fashion um, if it exceeds a threshold. But I have my doses kind of set to a schedule, so they're constantly getting a certain volume, and I want to try to match and balance it with the aquarium. So ideally, they're all getting a, the same stable volume throughout the day, mm -hmm. but if it exceeds the threshold, then, then I start turning them off one at a time. I see. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, for me, um, I've been pretty vanilla <laughs> recently, you know? I, I think because I think a lot about... Um, you know, uh, how people are going to use our equipment uh, and get the most out of it with a little bit of it, with the, with the least amount of effort, i.e. using our tasks and things like that and thinking about what we're going to be doing in the future and things like that. I tend to find that um, I really do just use the tasks more than anything these days. I know that's really boring uh, that I'm not doing anything exciting. Now, um, I do um, use the Apex for my Christmas light display. Um, and I use a lot of oscillation functions to have lights flashing at different sequences and things like that. Um, so it all happens um, kind of in a in a symphony of lights. Um, so you know, Paul, uh, Paul, I have to ask: When you use yeah. the tasks, do you watch yourself on video? <laughs> um, <laughs> I do know how to bypass the video um, because I <laughs> because I don't necessarily use the normal server when I'm using it. Uh, so I'm oh, uh, kind of going okay. in the background. Um, but in the special the special features called in the yeah. beta server. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And um, you just touched on something nice, and this is a question that we do get from time to time. Um, you know. Uh, the way that we hosted videos in the past, you were able to skip the videos. You didn't have to watch all of them. And I'm sure everyone really loves seeing me tell you how to fill your alkalinity, fill, remove the waste container over and over again in their MP. We will have that I ability to I listen to, to it in start and, to finish every time. You listen to it, yeah. Uh, that's, I can't that's get enough, Paul. I'm, I'm a big fan. I can't get enough. Uh, it, will, in the, it will, in the future, you will be able to skip those again. Uh, that, that'll be a future future feature request. Uh, so I just did want to comment on that. You did. But if you're in the Paul fan club, but if you're in the Paul fan club, you can still watch the whole thing, right? I suppose you could. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I use the uh, I use the oscillate function for my Christmas tree light display. You use it probably here and there. Um, you want to take a stab at trying to explain it to folks. So oscillate. I mean, this is this is one of the things that's. Let's let's improvise it. This is for advanced users. If you have a need to use it, you can certainly try to program it yourself. I believe that there are tasks. So if you're using a pump, that'll set this up for you. But if you are daring and you want to try something new, Oscillate's there for you. So if you go into, there's a lot of forums online that'll explain this. ChatGPT could be your friend. But if you want to go in and you, you set the Oscillate function, there's three different times. There's a number, which is the time. The first one is the delay before the first run. The second is the time to run. And then the third one is the delay until the next run. And then you have to put a then, and then you say on or off. So when you combine all those together, 
it gives you the opportunity to intermingle two different oscillate functions as well. So that's the long and short of it. If you want to try and play with the oscillate function, it's a very powerful tool because you have those three numbers. And it gives you the opportunity to make very short oscillations, so some very rapid things, or spread things out over time. And to clarify, right, let's say you have two things and you want those two things to essentially go back and forth, like an old school wave maker or something. One would essentially be, let's say, over a minute period. One would be 30 seconds off, 30 seconds on, zero seconds off. This other one would be zero seconds off, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. You see that off time is basically put either in the front on one of the pumps or in the back on the second pump, if that makes sense. Um, I'll throw in a couple of screen shares here as we go through this as well, um, just to kind of supplement this. But I think that um, uh, play with it. And Pat also kind of highlighted a fun thing too. You can always uh, re use chat GPT with this. Uh, you know, say, hey, you're programming an Apex and you want this to happen. Um, Play with it. See what it does. Now, at your own, uh, at your own, um, uh, you know, peril or benefit. So whenever you do these sorts of programming things, observe it to make sure that it works the way it was intended to. I actually think ChatGPT has done it. They, it does write Apex like code, advanced code. It does very yes. well. You know, mm -hmm. there might be some tweaks that it gets wrong, but. For the most part, it can research and, and make sure that it looked all all the forum posts for you. You just describe what you're trying to do. And it's pretty accurate. It gets it gets you ninety percent of the way there. The reason why it gets it wrong is people in forum posts or people in <laughs> people in forum posts or different places probably said wrong things, and it was using that piece of information. Uh, uh, so it's not ChatGPT's fault. <laughs> um, uh, then another advanced programming question, and I'll, I'll take it, uh, is uh, how to use the defer function, right? So defer is great. Um, I use it uh, frequently for things that um, I don't want to have happen immediately, but I want it to happen if something is true for a period of time. So for example, if, um, uh, uh, if you have like a level switch or something like that, and let's say your sump kind of fluctuates a couple of centimeters here and there. You don't want it to turn on and off, on and off, on and off all the time. You want it to only turn on after that level switch has fallen for a period of time and stays low, right? So you could say, only turn this pump on if my level switch is below um, uh, the le or below a certain level for a period of, let's say, 30 seconds. So once it's say below 11 centimeters or 11 inches or so, then turn on. Um, but only do that if it stays consistently below 11 inches for 30 seconds. Um, defer is also interesting is that it applies to the entire state of the outlet. So um, if you have any other on statements in your outlet, those also become true as well. So anytime something turns on, it's gonna wait 30 seconds for that statement to be true before it actually um, uh, um, before it actually takes action on that. Yeah, I think this is really a useful feature and you can defer before you turn it on or you can defer before you turn it off. And that gives you a lot of flexibility. Another example might be a skimmer, right? If you're turning your skimmer on, but you want to wait a period of time to allow all of the other pumps in your aquarium to uh, turn back into a, a situation that you know, equilibrium has happened, right? So you're yep. not getting overflows. That's another great option. The defer thing can be used for heaters. I use it as well for not allowing things to flap on and off as like Paul was mentioning. Yeah, so yeah. if you're using something for an auto top off, now the important thing to note, just to reemphasize, this is a global setting. So usually the last command is true when you're using Apex Advanced Programming. But the defer is global. So if there's a defer statement, it's going to apply to any other logic inside of your advanced programming window. Um, it, 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 for that outlet. It's not for all outlets, obviously. It's Correct. just for that specific outlet. Um, defer is also great to use with min time. Um, that's if um, you want something to be on for a period of time or off for a period of time before turning back on or off again. So example is, uh, when this pump turns on, I always want it to run one minute no matter what. 
right? Um, so you'd say min time one minute then on. Or I always want this device, anytime it turns off, I want it to be off for a period of 20 minutes, right? So min time then off. This is great for things like uh, chillers, um, possibly really big devices. Um, and uh, the min time on is really great for things like auto top off and things like and uh, uh, things of that nature.